Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on this live chat today. We are excited to have you all here. And we're also excited to talk about the war on hair loss, okay? So we have a couple of guests, two guests that are gonna come on and I'm just gonna really dive into it. I wanna let you guys know that you'll all have opportunities to come on live and also ask your question. So feel free to do that. A big shout out to our guests. I'm so grateful to have them on here. We have two guests, as I mentioned, of course, you know, the founder, the creator of War on Hair Loss, which is Dabs from Natural Hair Can Grow, Trichology, that's NHCG Trichology. So she has been here. We did one last month, if you missed it, end of last month. So you don't want to miss the next one that we'll be having coming up soon. After this one, we're going to have one in January also and then in December also. So you don't want to miss it. So you do want to join War on hairloss.com, the war on hairloss.com. Also on Instagram, you can join war on hair loss. So today we're going to talk about the topic of hair loss and nutrition and different angles that you might never have heard of, of, of before. So let's start off and uh, I'm going to introduce the first person and then bring in the next person. So big shout out. Let's applaud all our ladies. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, everyone. So I'm going to unmute your mic. So let me introduce Dabs. Hi, Dabs. Hi. Hi, Shara. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> okay. So Dabs, you're going to move a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because we have three people today. Mm -hmm. We have three people today. So I'm going to take... Hello. <laughs> I see everyone is here. Let me just put remove that and then y'all can get introduced to who is on the screen right now so you all know me i'm shola and we have samara and i'm I hope i'm saying your name right samara that's samaria samaria Samaria. okay samaria beautiful name yeah <laughs> and then we have dabs over there and so dabs can you let's start off with you okay introduce myself yeah Oh, okay. So my name is Dabs, um, Dabs Oboru. I am the owner of NHCG Trichology. I'm a certified trichologist, and I have been in the field of trichology for about five years, 2017. Um, right now, my practice is out of Houston, Texas, and we see a lot of clients um, who are dealing with hair loss, scalp issues, like psoriasis, dermatitis dermatitis, and just a bunch of different um, scalp issues. We also help people who are looking for having, setting up a healthy hair regimen. So if you are having issues with breakage, dryness, or any kind of hair loss, we're the go-to. Um, so the War on Hair Loss platform was actually, it's the background, <laughs> you can see building a community for people dealing with hair loss to be empowered with knowledge and expertise. So it was, it's really a passion project for me, for a lot of people who I have come across that are dealing with hair loss that wish they had the information, wish they had the actionable steps, the knowledge um, prior to when the hair loss got to the irreversible stage because we're actually running or rushing against time when um, it concerns hair loss. So if you're able to catch it on time, if you're able to adjust your lifestyle or even your diet, which we're going to dig deep into today, you can go a long way to um, stopping or stalling your hair loss. So that's me in a nutshell. Thank you so much. So I'm going to bring in Samara. Samaria, welcome, welcome. Let's bring you up. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Samaria Granberry, um, and I really wanted to say thanks uh, to Dabs and Sola for bringing me on today. I'm really excited to talk to you guys just about my passion, which is um, nutrition. And so uh, professionally, I am a registered dietitian, so um, I have a few years of experience working in the medical healthcare 
Um, and just recently, over the past year and a half, I started studying trichology through the World Trichology Society. And so um, actually in January, I'll uh, take my test to become a certified trichologist. And so, so over the past um, over the past year and a half, I really started to use trichology um, in, co uh, in combination with my knowledge and expertise as a dietitian. And I founded my business um, called Feeding the Root, Nutrition and Hair Therapy. And so in my business, what I do is I help women figure out the root causes of their um, hair, hair loss conditions um, and their hormonal imbalances. And so I use really a whole body uh, approach to at attacking um, the conditions that weigh so many women down when it comes to um, symptoms with like a menopause or PMS or um, really bad uh, menstrual cycles or hair loss or really bad skin issues, bloating, um, gut health, like all the things that uh, we experience that we've kind of normalized in our society, but that could eventually lead to uh, hair loss conditions. Um, so that's what I do in my practice. I also um, am growing, I'm a farmer as well. And so I uh, grow plants to help my clients um, in their journeys to wellness. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's so nice to, I mean, let me just say, I, I'm glad I know you now because I don't know how to grow things. I tried and there's a time <laughs> limit. There's a time limit. Everything just dies on me. I had this um, coffee plant that I had in a cup. It died. It came back to life and now it died again. And I think no. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to try again in the spring. But thank you, ladies, for introducing yourself. And so today we're going to talk about the topic of hair loss as pertaining to diet, as pertaining to nutrition. And the key, the thing is this, when people lose their hair, so one of the things that they think <laughs> that is happening is that, okay, you guys can hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm just making sure that, good. So when people have hair loss one of the issues that they say is they don't look at what they're eating right so they always just look like okay i'm losing my hair uh what can i put on it what can i do um and all that what has been your experience with people when they've lost their hair what has been your first experience with people when you deal with those kind of issues okay can samara take that while i set up my light <laughs> yeah samara thank you yeah, so I think that um, when I, so as a dietitian, right, I've been working as a dietitian for a couple of years. Um, and so going, like, really starting to look at the field of like trichology and hair loss, I really saw a lot of um, kind of like people throwing supplements um, at, at hair loss, right? And it's like, but we know that it's so much deeper than that. And so yeah. a lot of times, you know, you can throw as many supplements as you want, but if, the person has poor issues tolerating or poor issues absorbing things, um, the supplements aren't necessarily going to provide the, re the lasting results that they're yeah. looking for. Yeah. Um, and so, so one of the things that I like to do is really go to like, I'm always asking why, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people really don't understand because I think in our society, um, the way that we kind of attack medicine is kind of look at the symptoms, put a Band-Aid on it, but not really figure out uh, why. Like, okay, if you have low iron, then why, right? Um, if you have a thyroid issues, okay, then why? And so digging deeper to figure out the root causes of them um, and not just really looking to put a Band-Aid on it um, and send the person on their on their way. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because there's a lot of health issues that can occur from people just, jumping the gun and not thinking that their health is in relation with this. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. That's yeah. So, um, yeah, but I want to really say a sh hi to Evado. Evado says she's glad that this beautiful uh, talking about the connections between nutrition and hair loss so yay so we're doing something good somebody is glad that we're talking about this and uh, we have a couple of people also coming in um joining us and of course a big shout out to 
Miss Cardio Quinn, who has been waiting, waiting for this discussion like no man's business. <laughs> I don't know if we will say like no man's business, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Um, I'm going to go back to. Oh Dan. my gosh, <laughs> Dabs is having a little struggle time. So I'm gonna let her. I'm gonna let Dabs figure it out when she's done. So um, let's do this. Um, when she figures that we'll come bring her back on stage. Yeah, okay. so in terms of hair loss, like nutrients, when it comes to nutrients, what are some key nutrients that one should focus on? In I know there are so many nutrients that we can mm -hmm. pull from, but in terms of the key nutrients that people have, cons that people are like, okay, this one, you should be having this category of nutrients in your diet. What would you say is that nutrient? I know what I think, but let me hear from you. Okay, only one. Um, let me see. So I want to. I'll say this one because it's like the leading. Um, it's the, the leading cause of hair loss worldwide, and one of the the leading um, mineral deficiency worldwide in premenopausal women. Um, mm -hmm. Which and that's iron, right? Yes. From the we all yes. hear about, right? Because it's like every month, you know, when you're losing blood, you're losing iron, um, mm -hmm. and then. Um, it's really important for for you know blood health um, and for hair growth, and so uh, I would say iron for sure. And then uh, mm -hmm. behind that one, I would just say generally, which a lot of people don't talk about, is just overall energy, right? So like calories equals energy for your body, and so you know, especially like in in America and you know in the the West, it's so much like oh. Like there's so many diets and so many calorie restrictions. Um, and so when people come say, oh, I'm, I'm doing this diet or I'm doing this diet that's cutting carbs or really cutting calories in general, or I'm only drinking juices for this certain amount of time. Like your, your hair doesn't have the energy that it needs mm -hmm. to, um, to really grow. And so I think iron would be one, but then two, like behind that would be just calories in general. I think a lot of people are not eating enough to even fuel the process of hair of hair growth. Yeah, that I I never correlated that one. That's that eating enough one. <laughs> yeah, I that's one that I need to. I mean, I, I like today. This is the only thing I've had today, which which is bad. Sorry, I had an I had two cuties and a banana <laughs> and my green tea. So Dabs, what do you think in terms of if you're gonna tell someone you have to you have to eat this food or this food group, what will be that food in your opinion? Okay, so with me, I would definitely say protein. Mm -hmm. um, our hair is made up of protein, and um, it's just an accumulation of dead cells, dead protein, keratinized. So eating protein is very um, important if you are on a diet um, that is not rich in protein, you might be dealing with some deficiencies. Um, she spoke about iron, there's zinc, um, there's a lot of folic acid, there's a lot of in, um, nutrients that are in protein that um, your hair needs. Um, but the issue is like if you have like a, um, what they call it, a vegan diet or vegetarian diet, and you want to cut out protein, um, you might have to, you want to cut out like, you know, protein, like animal fat, animal protein. Mm -hmm. You might have to look for um, vegetarian or vegetable supplements or substitutes that have mm -hmm. enough nutrients to keep your hair healthy. So yeah. protein, definitely. Okay, so before we get more into the core of the foods that can help you to get your hair thicker, get your hair fuller. Um, we're going to just take uh, two questions. Everybody, feel free to drop your questions. Feel free to share this. Feel free to follow all our guests. Of course, you can follow um, Samaria at Feeding the Root. Feeding the Root, right? Yes. Yeah, Feeding the Root on Instagram and also um, Dabs at NHCG Trichology on Instagram. So uh, Brittany, Brittany is uh, my sister down the street. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. So Brittany wanted to know where Samaria is located. Where are you located? I'm located in Memphis, Tennessee. So um, as a dietitian, I'm licensed to practice anywhere in Tennessee. 
Okay, so you guys, you got the answer. So we're all moving down to Tennessee. <laughs> so that we can get as a dietitian, which I oh, I think I need one. Anyway, um, then we have a next question from Sawa. Sawa says, I have the tendency to suffer from anemia. Sometimes I take medicine, but I can't always do that. Any tip on what to focus on for my hair care routine? So... I I'll take, I'll take that. With anemia, um, you're dealing with um, a blood disorder or a lack of iron and lack of um, blood circulation. And for a, a hair routine that can help, taking your medication is very important, of course, um, your iron supplements and any other supplements that your doctor will recommend. Well, I have a few clients for that have anemia. So with their hair care routine, we kind of um, switch things up, especially if they're still seeing their menstrual cycle. So during those times, you will want to increase the, you want to change your diet to increase, um, you know, folic acid, iron, and any iron rich food that you can eat, omega threes and fish and um, shellfish. They're also very great during that time you want to increase it anytime that there's like any kind of um, scalp activity, whether it's been, it's shampooing your hair or whether it's a scalp massage, you want to intensify, especially when you're in your uh, menstrual cycle. And um, if you're feeling in, hydrating is also very good. Like if you're feeling wheezy, weak because of the anemia, you want to make sure you're taking in enough fluids and just keeping that blood circulating in your body because the blood is where the regeneration, where the healing and the growth happens. So if it's optimized, if it's um, being stimulated and cleansed, then you will have your hair in check. Your hair will be healthier. So the routine will be an external where stimulation, massaging and all those things and internal as well as to how what you take in and how to optimize your blood um, if you have anemia awesome thank you dad samaria what do you what are you what's your advice for sawa um for anemia um i would ask is it b12 or iron um because there's you know different reasons why you have anemia so if it's um you know b12 you want to get in good sources of like b12 which are like uh, basically animal sources um and then you know with iron depending on if you are you know vegan or vegetarian or you eat like animal sources like getting in good sources of iron which are you know again your meat sources your animal sources but also it can be things like beans and uh and greens as as well so okay great great and um I will really, really emphasize uh, to you, Sawa, to take your medication. Um, it's very important. Uh, as someone that has suffered with anemia since I was diagnosed when I was when I was thirteen, that was when I it hit, it hit critical um, levels and blood transfusion, all that stuff. So I really, really emphasize: don't skip on that medication. Because when you skip on that medication, your body goes out of balance. And um, yeah, so try not doing that if possible. So we had a, a few questions, but before we answer those questions, it's also get towards iron. Um, one of the things, there are five things that you can actually eat for fuller mm -hmm. and healthier hair. So when you have hair loss, um, there are ways that you can treat it but the key thing is your diet and as we all know our hair skin and nails are the last one of the last organ organs that get that nutrient and when you have a deficiency in any of your nutrition those exhibit in your skin getting drier flaky your nails being brittle your hair getting you know breaking your hair not looking luscious as it should so there's some things that you can do, some foods that you can eat. I know we're talking about, we did talk about vegan foods. Mm -hmm. One person had a question about, and that is Mercedes. She wanted to know iron-rich foods for vegans. 
Now, uh, do any of you, there's, I know a couple, but we need to kind of emphasize that, you know, iron can be found in uh, foods in two different ways. Of course, right. we have the animal derived, the hemis, um, eme, and then the non eme, which is the plant derived. So two ways. So most vegans will always gravitate or all vegans will gravitate towards the plant based. So can any of you ladies kind of give some tips if you, I don't know if any of you what your diets are. I'm, I'm pretty much <laughs> consumed. I, like animal. So. <laughs> I don't follow certain diets. Okay. So I just yeah. didn't know if anybody was had any any ideas, but yeah. Yeah, I mean greens, leafy greens are a great way to have, you know, spinach, um, lentils, I think, or beans. They have iron. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Samaria. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with those. Yeah. I like tofu, yeah. chickpeas. But I will yeah, also add that it's pretty hard, it's pretty difficult to get um, iron, adequate iron from plant sources. Um, and so, especially around that time of the month when you're losing, you know, when you're losing um, so much. And so I might consider some type of like supplementation depending on what your blood levels are looking, up, looking like, especially if you are losing hair. Um, or experiencing any symptoms of um, iron deficiency, um, I might look at like a short-term supplementation, kind of get your iron levels back up to where they need to be to support your hair health. Yeah. So one other thing that I noticed, some ideas like uh, dried fruits, you can incorporate dried fruits, nuts and seeds and whole grain, like whole grain bread. Yeah. Of course, look for the vegan whole grain bread. Um, other things that you can do is just, you know, your medication is important. Um, also, just know the signs of when you feel like you are not getting enough iron in your body. One sign, of course, is fatigue. When you start feeling fatigue, when you start feeling lethargic, weak, of course, your skin also, when your skin looks pale, there's no, like, growing up, it was so weird because I'll get all those aunties pulling down my eye, you know? <laughs> I'm like, are you okay? Because I was always, I, I always had this fog look until I was probably diagnosed. I was always in a fog. So there'll be people that'll be like, oh, looking, oh, there's no red. <laughs> and they're pitching your end. And whenever, you know, whenever you go get the blood, whenever I go get the, you know, my blood tested, I, the one technician that pissed me off was just like pressing on my hand like, girl, where's the blood? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah, so uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, you just have to do what you have to do in terms of knowing the symptoms and also knowing what you need to eat. Okay, so talking about the food, we're talking about more foods and foods that can help. Uh, Dabs, do you have more information regarding foods that can help with general hair? Um, hair health? Mm -hmm. Okay, help. well, protein, as I said, fatty acids, um, just a healthy, balanced diet is what we should be aiming for. Balance is very important with with the body, with healthcare, you know, you want to be able to, <laughs> you want, yes, you want to be able to focus on having balance with your diet because too much of anything, even if it's the best thing in the world, is going to be bad for you. Mm -hmm. So, of course, anything inflammatory, so inflammatory um, foods like sugars and um, there's some bad you know, even bad protein, too much of meats can cause inflammation in your body and that can salt, of course, and that can lead to hair loss, different types of hair loss. So you want to focus on on making sure that you have a balanced diet. Um, I, I was going to throw this in the discussion. I don't know if you, what your thoughts are on, Samaria. Um, IV therapy, um, using IVs to kind of infuse into your body B12 and things that might be lacking in your blood. What are your thoughts on it? 
how effective is it and long term what are the implications yeah, I think that um, I know they're becoming increasingly popular in different areas. And I think mm -hmm. that um, it's similar to like when you go, I kind of liken it to like when you go to the hospital and you're like really dehydrated and they put fluids, you know, directly into your veins. It's like, yes, you could just go drink water, but like you're at the state that you um, are like, dehydrated you need it like you wouldn't be able to get in as much water as you need in that very moment right so um i think that for people who you know need a like you know just like an acute like a large amount of something acutely mm -hmm. um, i think it can, it can be helpful i haven't looked into like super long term um like implications, implications. Of it. Mm -hmm. yeah i haven't um but I do have a couple of clients who, who do it occasionally for like. So that. all you would say is for like people with extreme cases of deficiency or. Needing yeah, to I don't necessarily. I don't know. I haven't seen any really good research that proves that getting an extra like a, a IV dose of B12 is helpful in if you're not deficient. Right. Awesome. Okay. Okay, I think, I, mean, it, it, I think maybe because it's also a little bit like relatively new. There's not lots of like yeah, it's a lot, a lot of people doing it nowadays. So. Oh wow, I, that's why I was wondering. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I was wondering why a lot of people are doing it. It might is it that it's working? Um, is because it's like a lot of people popping up doing IV therapy. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. That is interesting. I'll interesting. send you a link, Shola. Don't worry. I'll put you up today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, the next question that is, the actually question that is coming up now is um, one from Siolanda. Siolanda asks the question, and I know we're not, we're not talking about uh, menopause and all that mm -hmm. stuff right now. We're talking about food. But I think this is also a good question that we might want to put in maybe future shows. I... Um, she, she Yolanda, uh, she wanted to know what about postmenopausal women? Our hair grows very slow after menopause. menopause. Yeah. So uh, we all know why that is probably the case. That big E. <laughs> <laughs> <That's huge. laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. does anybody want to tackle? So, I don't know the diet angle of it or the yeah. nutrition let's, angle of it yeah then, let's do the diet angle the, yes first, and then I we can add cool. in yeah mm -hmm. yeah um i think so and I, and this is a, a something that i challenge like lots of people to kind of think about because um like when you you know when you think about diet or just like food sometimes people just think of it in like one area but Every single process in the body is dependent on nutrients, right? And so all these processes of like menopause and even like sleep, energy, hair, heart health, like all of these processes that are happening in the body are facilitated by things like zinc and magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, and so nutrient deficiency nutrient deficiencies can really show up in so many different areas and, and really exacerbate um the, the hormonal conditions. And so I do work with a lot of women who are um, going through menopause to, because their nutrient levels can be very, very low. Um, yeah. that, exac that exacerbate the, the symptoms of, um, of menopause. Um, and so like with estrogen, um, so like the estrogen, you know, plummets uh, yeah. post, post menopause. Um, and there's not, you know, a bunch that you know you can do about that process because it's mm -hmm. it's a natural po process that's important you know for your body to go through um but there's so many things when it comes to lifestyle factors that can really cause those symptoms to be worse so one thing we talk about is like sleep mm -hmm. um you know those things are it's so important to sleep or what's your stress looking like um when you when you are eating are you nourishing your body or are you just like like uh you know throwing down food really fast but not actually you know chewing. nourishing your body yeah. chewing your food um i know a lot of people like to say like you are what you eat but i like to say you are what you digest right you mm -hmm. are what you absorb um because if we're sitting you know if you're eating while you're working you're eating in the car you aren't really absorbing all of the nutrients that you really could be 
Um, mm-hmm. And so it can be exacerbating your 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 symptoms of like low estrogen. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything to say, Dabs? With me, um, of course, practical um, remedies are keeping a healthy hair regimen that involves a lot of, um, of course, controlling buildup. So DHT mm-hmm. is a factor, um, dihydrotestosterone. Um, with your hormonal changes, that can be triggered. So you want to control the amount of buildup on your hair. So keeping a regimen that that um, involves cleansing your scalp and scalp massages. I just, I mean, massage <laughs> advocates because yeah. I've seen, I've seen what it does for for blood circulation for healthy hair. So that and um, exercise is also something where it doesn't have to be like cardio or something, but mm-hmm. just moving your body, causing blood circulation, blood flow to your scalp is really good for menopausal women and avoiding those hairstyles that will break the hair and cause yeah. tension and breakage. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are those are great tips. <laughs> can I make one more comment about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Well, I would like to ask the apps to, can you like mm-hmm. explain uh, a little bit more like from the hormonal side? Um, mm-hmm. So like when you have drops, when you have drops in estrogen, um, do you see like increases in testosterone, which leads to uh, the DHT? It depends on the clients. Like some people are already predisposed to that increase, um, especially like people that have PCOS and some struggles with hormonal imbalances. So it depends. Some women will not have that increase. Some women will. And it's, it's always telling by the way the hair is shedding. And some of them will tell you, you know, I sweat a lot on my scalp. Or, you know, once I started doing exercise, I started losing more hair. So that's indicative that there might be something on the scalp that is causing the, the um, hair shedding. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I was thinking what you were saying while you were speaking about the way, the way estrogen affects the, the thyroid. Mm-hmm. Um, and so how, you know, when when women experience low estrogen during menopause, how it could slow down the thyroid as well, which could also like lead to more to. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh, interconnected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. It's, it's just quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So um, Shalanda, Shalanda, <laughs> she Yolanda, hope I, you've got enough information to go by. And uh, we're going to, we're going to take another question. Uh, we're going to take this question from Rachel. So Rachel says, how can you grow hair that refuses to grow, but keeps getting fuller? So it's so, growing up, not down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the trick of the hair, the hair is growing like that, but not yeah. going down. Yeah. Maybe okay. trim your ends. Maybe a lot of sweet ends are causing it to look. So it, it will... It will always have the density was it always came with right you always have the mm. number of follicles you were born with but then if you're not able to retain length which is what i suspect this question is about is probably because your ends are weak mm. and breaking off so you're mm. seeing the volume but you're not seeing the length so get into mm. a proper hair regimen start to do some protein treatments to strengthen the hair and definitely keep your ends trained so that they don't split by themselves. That's yeah. my recommendation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Samara? Yeah, I definitely like uh, agree with that in that I think the question might be more, is your hair not growing or are you not retaining length? You're retaining. Um, because a lot of mm-hmm. times, right, we, our hair is growing. It's just, like, are, we, are we retaining it? Mm-hmm. Um, and then also measuring, like, measuring it might be helpful for you yeah. to um, because like you are looking at, especially with kinky curly hair, right? Like it looks like our hair is always this length. Right. It's like oh, it takes forever to actually see like you substantial growth. Uh-huh. And so yeah, maybe trying to um, like starting to measure it could help you see the uh, the growth and the length mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. just like looking at it over like pictures or in the mirror. Yeah, is that all very... your hair, Samaria? Yeah, is that all your hair? Is that all your hair? Uh huh. Is all yeah. your hair? Yes. Oh, 
Yeah. So I think it's so deceptive. It's so deceptive. It's like you put your, you, you wash your hair, of course, the shrinkage, and then, you know, you do something with it. It looks fuller. You put it into another style. Even the funniest thing about our hair is you can put it into a puff one day. And then the next, another time, you put it into the same puff and it looks totally di different. And you're just like, really, what happened? And you are teasing and talking. <laughs> I stop, you know, I just I just say my hair. I'm like, girl, just do what you ever want to do. Just, <laughs> just stay on my head. Don't <laughs> just stay on my head, right? <laughs> stay on my head. <laughs> do your <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk more about uh, the foods. Uh, fatty fish. So fatty fish is one of those uh, ingredients or nu nutrients that people say, if you're not a vegan, of course, um, or vegetarian, uh, they'll say, okay, omega-3s, uh, foods that are high in fatty acid, including omega-3s and vitamin D, like tuna, mackerel, salmon, and other food, they are good nutrients for your hair. And that is because they say fish is a good source for protein, selenium, and B vitamins to promote healthy hair. Uh, what do you say about that in terms of those kind of, like for, for people, if you love fish, then you're good. But if you don't love fish, where do you get those kind of nutrients from, especially like the omega-3s? I know the answer, but I'm going to let you guys say it. <laughs> Yeah, I would recommend, one thing I always, I love to recommend is cod liver oil. Okay. Um, I think it's a really easy addition to um, people's diets. Um, some people who like to hate fish, they can blend it into their oatmeal, blend it into their smoothies. Um, some people even can like mix it into their coffee. Um, and it is a really great source of vitamin D, vitamin A, omega-3s. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, omega-3s... Omega omega threes. Um, there's like omega threes and omega sixes. Like the ratio, um, it's like a pro pro inflammatory ratio versus like an anti inflammatory ratio. And you know, studies show that in Amer the American diet is way higher in omega sixes versus like mm -hmm. omega threes. And so we want those omega threes to help mm -hmm. decrease inflammation. Um, mm -hmm. We, as we know, inflammation leads to can lead to scalp conditions, and then mm -hmm. also the omega threes help fight off um, like negative uh, they're called reactive oxi oxidative species. But it's essentially like the bad guys that are floating around in <laughs> our body that are like degrading our organs, that are causing autoimmune conditions, like all of these things that can affect um, hair loss. Um, mm -hmm. Omega threes help to kind of fight those those are um those bad guys and yeah. so um yeah getting a good source of like a cod liver oil or even taking like a fish oil supplement um if you really you know absolutely like hate fish uh flax seeds are a really nice um addition as well i like to use flax seed adding to oatmeal again like smoothies you can even like um say for example if you're making like muffins you could use mm -hmm. half of the um half of the flour and add in like ground flax flax seed flour and you know yeah. get the fiber as well as like omega threes. Yeah, I, I like yeah. flax seeds, um, chai seeds. Mm -hmm. Those are also really, really good. Um, I've not tried hemp seeds before, but people say hemp seeds are really high in omega threes and other stuff like seaweeds. And it, um, it, 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 it I can never say that word. Edamame. Edamame. Yeah, Edamame. I can Edamame. never say that Edamame. word. <laughs> Well, yeah, someone, I, someone I don't like them. Uh, seaweed and sea moss. Yeah, seaweed and sea moss. Yeah. So, yeah, sea moss, uh, I, the powder form, just drizzling it in some of your foods, that can yeah. help. But yeah. I, I hear that you have to be really careful with sea moss, not to use too much. I don't yeah. know why. But what do you think, um, Dabs, in terms of... Yeah, I like that. The oil route. If you're mm -hmm. if you're not really big on eating actual fish, using um, the oils derived from fish and nuts like flaxseed, she said olive oil. They're all yeah. very um, rich, good fats to add to your diet. Even if you're having a salad, you mm -hmm. drizzle your oil on there. You're able to take in those healthy fats that your hair and your body needs. Nice. So that's that's a really good um, route to take. 
That's eggs too. Good. I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, eggs. Yeah, uh, eggs too are good. Yeah, <laughs> but not too good. much. Not too much, of course, yeah. cholesterol wise. But I know. I found. Yeah. I found a way to instead of frying egg or boiling egg, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I nuke them in the waffle iron. I saw that. <laughs> I love it. Wow. It's so good. I mean, since with, I found with it, bread? With bread? No, no, so no. You put the bread in there. It was without bread. I've not tried it with bread, but oh. I saw someone do it once and I was like, I'm gonna try it out. And I need I'm gonna write waffle iron for Christmas. I need a new waffle iron because my waffle iron it is ruined broken. it. Oh. What? No, you didn't ruin it, the egg. No, 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 it didn't ruin oh. it. It oh, still okay. works. So what I did oh. was I, I just broke the egg in the waffle uh -huh. iron. I put it as a Instagram reel. I broke the oh, egg in the waffle iron. I put some spinach, put some peppers, put some just vegetable on it. And I just closed the waffle iron, flipped it around, and just waited for the waffle iron to change and say ready. And it, mm -hmm. was, as it was perfect as frying oh, an wow. egg. It was the same thing. <laughs> so, I mean, okay. you could have taken some, if you are eat bacon and all that stuff and sausage, you could have drizzled, you know, and it came out Make so it good. Mm -hmm. So, but the key thing is, whenever I eat egg, I only eat one at most two. But this one, you have to make four. And so, this oh. is me with my kids. You guys want them to eat today? <laughs> mom. I say, eat, please, girls, eat because it tastes better. You know, leftover <laughs> eggs is nasty. So, of course. <laughs> yeah. But eggs oh, is okay. really good. Yeah. So, using those oils with eggs would be oh, like, yeah. you know, really good yeah. too. That's good. Okay, so Sawa had um actually she had a comment regarding advice. She was like, personally, I remember she's the one with the iron anemia. So Sawa said, um, personally, the loss of hair means that my iron level is already quite very low. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I satisfy to that. <laughs> I did notice a loss of eyelashes, but I ignored it. So I would suggest making sure to be careful about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, it's very it's very important. And I'm so glad you said that Sawa, you know what's going on. It's like we preach to ourselves. We know yeah. what we're doing wrong, we know what we have to do, but to take the steps sometimes it's like, oh, I gotta take yet another pill. Mm -hmm. I gotta take oh this much pill. I I, I you know I'm a pill popper. I I, <laughs> you know, I admit, and you know, being someone that just carried a bag full of pills everywhere. Wait, I mean, so how many supplements do you take? Well, let me know. What's in your reduced. stash? It has reduced. It has reduced. Okay. When, when I was a teenager, I used to pop 13 pills a day. Yeah, that was before they knew how to put things. I was a teenager before you all were born. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you just said this for that this for that but now i've been able to just bring it out to like four or five you know so which is good um mm -hmm. works out good and it sustains me and when i stop taking one of them my body is just so spoiled like something is just gonna start happening you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm trying to fine tune myself, look good beyond my age. I want to be like that grandma who is 60 years old and like, oh, you're so cool. getting hit on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be one of those people, you know. But uh -huh. now, I mean, Instagram told me that I look 20, so I'll take that <laughs> any day, any time. They were I screen, I screen recorded that, you know, that filter. I yeah. screen recorded that filter. I have it saved on my phone. <laughs> I've just saved on my computer. I put it on my vlog so that it will be there Do for not life. Make me laugh. <laughs> well, let me bust your bubble. They told my daughter, who is five, that she looks 26. So, oh, <laughs> well, you know, that's when I knew mm -mm, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll just I'm not gonna listen to that. La, 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 la. You're 21, don't 20. worry. You're 21. Oh so, yeah. But I'm so glad that Sawa, she's seeing what is going on. Please keep taking your medication. Go to your doctor, always do your checkup regularly, and you'll be good. Now, um, Brittany was saying that is CMOS good, which we have already testified. CMOS, have you guys, any of you tried CMOS? Um, excessively, and what has been your results? I got a jar of CMOS. I 
didn't quite enjoy it. <laughs> taste. What are you using um, for? I try to put it on like in smoothies, yeah. like my shakes. And yeah. to be honest, I think I put too much because yeah. I'm just too yeah. overzealous. And it was just like, it had this seawater taste somehow. Mm. It, it made it like an irony taste. Like when mm. you taste iron, so, but then I reduced, and then I've used it physically, like yeah. on my face and my scalp, and mm. I, I I quite enjoyed that. It was very like soothing. It was almost like using aloe gel, because oh, I okay. it was the sea moss gel I got. So oh, okay. it was yeah, not the powder. Soothing. No, I, I've never used the powder. I didn't even know they had a powder. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have the Irish, I have the Irish sea moss powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so what do you put in shakes, drinks? Remember, I just said I have it. I've not used it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it for months. And guess what? It is expiring, uh, I think, in January. Oh, so I know. It cost me a lot of money. And I even came on live. Okay. I was complaining to people how they didn't fill up the jar. And they had, like, little space. And I still haven't used it. You all, Brittany, I'm sure Brittany remembers that live when I was complaining about how these people duped me. And I went and I bought it for $16 and the jar was not filled up to the brim. And this was mm -hmm. during my life. I used to do live every single morning on Facebook, Discovery mm -hmm. Natural. And I used to, I would just complain I'm like, this seems, I'm going to use it one day. I'm going to use it in my hair. I'm going to use it in my smoothie. And I just discovered that still, I just forgot about open. it. <laughs> it's, it's just there. Well, so, today is your reminder to... Yeah. <laughs> to I think I'm going to just put it in front. Put it in the middle of the table. Like, mm -hmm. this is most... I don't know. Um, Yeah. So, let's... Um, We're going to be winding down in the next... I'll say about uh, 20 minutes or so. 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we talked about eggs. So, we're not going to dive more into eggs. But, of course, you all know that eggs have great sources of protein uh biotin selenium and zinc uh and also eggs are good source like i think b uh, vitamin b vitamins okay. so which are very good for hair skin and nails um someone was asking a question earlier that what is a good source for b12 source for vegans does anybody know yeah, so those are going to be similar uh, to the yeah. ones that we talked about with iron. So okay. uh, your bean, yeah, yeah, your beans, um, like tempeh, tofu, um, lentils, yeah, like the uh, chickpeas, stuff like chickpeas. that. Those. You do chickpeas, hummus. Um, those are some decent sources of B twelve. I will mm -hmm. say um, that because I know um, so like, uh, earlier you mentioned about um, whole grains. Uh, being, you know, for for iron and things like that, which they do have them in them, but also a lot of plant sources of iron also contain, um, and B12 contains something called phytates. Okay. And those phytates uh, can compete with the absorption. And so not only is yeah. it a plant source of, of these vitamins in that it's not the best absorbable uh, form, but it also has something... Um, a lot in the foods that kind of mm -hmm. compete with the absorption, which lessen the, the absorption. And then on top of that, you're thinking, you have to think also about like your gut health and your body's ability yes. to absorb foods. And so just overall, you studies show that vegans and vegetarians need it up to 50% more than the recommended, the recommended amount, mm -hmm. um, because all those things together are decreasing the amount, the absorption that you're actually absorbing. So um, just being mindful to either do a supplement or eat lots more of these plant sources of iron and B12. Yeah, that's I, that's really, really powerful to know. So keep in mind for, especially if it's someone that is thinking of going the vegan lifestyle, just know that you're, you have to educate yourself Absolutely. and not jump on bandwagons. You know what I mean? Absolutely. A lot of people don't educate themselves. They just say, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm going to be this. vegan. <laughs> And then they're losing their well, hair. I, I, I can't. Yeah. I like my. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> just, I'll just put it like that, you know. <laughs> that pepper soup. I can't just do pepper soup and vegetable in my pepper soup. <laughs> anyway. Me too, um, <laughs> we have a question from Diana. Diana was like, hello, beautiful ladies. Hi, Diana. 
Uh, she says her hair is dry and hard. How often should okay? So this is not about food. Um, this is just a general. How often should she be doing the LOC method on her hair? She's thinking every morning before bed. Is she on the right track? Uh, okay. You guys, you guys want to take yeah, that or well, me to? I will take that quickly. Yeah. Um, it really depends on what you're using to do the LOC method, what products are good for your hair, your hair type. You know, sometimes you might need more humectants, more hydration, things that will keep the moisture levels higher. What are you sealing that moisture in with? You know, sometimes your hair might not, if you have low porosity hair, you might not need those, you know, heavier butters and things that will completely seal your, your cuticles. So I usually like to recommend, like when I started my hair journey, things that are really liquid based that have not only um, water, but have emollients and humectants that you can spritz in your hair quickly. And um, if you want to do like a daily regimen, I use to just refresh and rehydrate your hair and then i would say do a proper moisturizing sealing session like at least twice twice a week you know but to say you'll be moisturizing sealing your hair doing the whole loc method every day is not practical and it's over manipulation and might cause your hair to have a setback because you're just having your hands in your hair every day Awesome. Thanks for that advice. Samaria, do you have anything to add to um, that? Oh, uh, no, I think she covered it pretty well. Yeah. I yeah. always tell people to do the praise. I say, I say it a lot. I say you do the praise in the morning. Thank praise. you, Lord, for waking oh. me up. Okay. Does my hair feel moisturized or I need to moisturize it? Okay, you're good. In the evening. Thank you, Lord. I had a good day. <laughs> okay. I, I say that because to be honest with you because people that I've, I've talked to so many people about this dry hair thing and people live in different areas people's nutrition is different um if you're like me that you're always in the house in a controlled environment and i moisturize my hair in the morning my hair might be fine and also you know the products are different they are formulated differently so many so many factors so i just go by my you know i have a feeling that like for me getting in tune with how my hair feels understanding that is just treasure if you understand how your hair feels it's like your hair speaks to you i'm a very touchy feeling person i can touch my hair and i can know i'm wearing a wig right now but i can touch my hair my hair is upset at me right now just me and i because <laughs> i did something and my head was quite upset with me anyway because i'm just a guinea pig for products right <laughs> but anyway so i can touch my hair i know that my hair needs this and that so yeah that's just me mm -hmm. but i do yes. like i do like get that. in tune with knowing how your hair feels yeah a lot of people are comparing how their hair feels and looks to the instagram youtube yeah and yeah. youtube like don't do that yeah. because you might set yourself up for you know, disappointment or feeling heartbreak. I'm feeling like maybe there's something wrong. Your your hair doesn't have to be as shiny as the next naturalist or as curly or as you know defined. It's yeah, your hair. So get to know how your hair feels and treat it accordingly. Yeah, good. So we're gonna talk about another food group, another vitamin that many people don't think about. I know we've talked about the leafy greens, everybody's talking about the greens, the grains and all that stuff. Fruits, vitamin C. Yeah. Powerful. Okay, yeah. Powerful. When you take iron, don't forget that vitamin C. You need that. So fruit is very, foods that are rich in, you know, vitamin C, antioxidants and stuff, they really help in protecting the hair. I look at vitamin C as, you know, you eat all this protein, all this stuff, and vitamin C is just a hogger. It's like a C. It's just mm. like, I got you. Okay. 
<laughs> that's how I, whenever I look at, whenever I take my vitamin C pill, I, my daughters will be like, oh yeah, I say you take iron pill. Yeah, because they're also anemic and they're women right now, they consider themselves. <laughs> so you just take, you know, I said, take you gotta, did, you, did you take the vitamin C? And they're like, oh, mom, can I just have the chewing one? I don't like the chewing one or two. This is what you see. But anyway, so what do you guys think about vitamin C? I, I think it's great. I think that, um, I think that, so well, first of all, it, it has very low risk as well. Because I know mm -hmm. over the past year and a half, a lot of people have been taking lots of vitamin C um does it does it is it super helpful for you know i don't necessarily um know if it needed to fly off the shelves as fast as it did um <laughs> but you know i think it has super low risk you know it's a water with it being like a water soluble vitamin that yeah. your body is not going to store it versus like taking too much vitamin d or taking mm -hmm. too much vitamin a um and so your body is really good at like protecting i think that vitamin c is really important like you said as like uh fighting like protecting your body yes. it's another source of those like antioxidants um to help like basically break it like fight the damage that your body is immune to from pollution and aging and the food and all these mm -hmm. things and so um and then also vitamin c is really important for uh collagen formation you know and that's the formation like of our <laughs> right of our <laughs> hair our skin. so making sure we're getting in good um good vitamin C sources help with the uh, formation of like collagen and keratin. Um, mm -hmm. And then like you said, the iron as well. So if you are a vegan or vegetarian, like if you are eating like, like I always say like chili is like the perfect blend of like um, iron and vitamin C because you put tomatoes and then peppers and then you're putting the beans. And so the, the tomatoes and the peppers are with the, with the vitamin C are helping the uh, iron being be absorbed from the plants versus the iron. Oh, that's good. Sounds chili sounds good right now. It yeah. really does. It's not bad time to eat lunch. Right? I know. I know. Have you have you guys yeah. ever made like black? Like I have this. You know, I need to stop this. I need to stop going to the store and say, "Oh, this looks fancy. This looks nice," and just picking it. Up. I did never you get sugar. I've had this bag of. I bought this bag of black beans, and they were organic, like mm -hmm. expensive, and I've had them for months like seven months i don't know what <laughs> can i just make a chili out of it i don't know maybe soak it in some hot water and blend it up <laughs> i make um i i'm saying chili i'm not saying akara or moi moi. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even to soak it up in chili with the tomato and all that oh, i don't know i don't know it's just <laughs> but anyway that, i mean <laughs> vitamin c what do you think dabs vitamin c oh yes i love the antioxidant um features of vitamin properties of vitamin C, those free radicals in our bodies that ruin our cells and the vitamin C goes in there, keeps them in check. I love that there's so many options um, you can use to get your vitamin C intake, there's fruit and there's um, different foods that you can take in that will give you vitamin C. I also love that you can actually physically get vitamin C and um, put into your products like your shampoos and you can actually use it to help and it absorbs into your scalp and your follicles so yeah. that's that's great for, for options to give people options yeah so that's good um we had some people just ask some questions about um uh, not related to foods uh, I will address that. So Megan, I'm going to address your question after this live stream. I'll go on the page and address because of the time. Um, and also <laughs> Susan had a question also about uh, winter and our hair growing more in the summer. We'll address that later. Uh, okay. So I just want to look through and see if anyone has any question. Um, so one thing that Alda, Alda also had a question about cutting hair. We will address that. So one thing, somebody that was looking for a source of B12. Thank you, Joy Banks. Joy Banks says nutritional yeast is also a good source of B12. And um, yeah, so getting authentic. Also, if you want to do the CMOS, you have to be very careful because there are so many... Uh, fake ones out there. So just be careful about it. 
So and yeah. also be careful of the sourcing because um, it can have lots of like heavy metals in yeah. it as well, like, I, like and like too much iodine. Mm. Um, so definitely being careful about the the sources. And then another another thing that I just want to think about, like um, in because it can be really easy, like you said, like hopping on bandwagons of all yeah. the things that we need to take. Um, and things can one get very expensive. Mm -hmm. um and also they can um they can be dangerous to your body if you're taking in too much and so yeah. like thinking through like hey well why do i need this sea moss or why do i need this um other supplement that's on the market um is it am i deficient in anything you know or mm -hmm. is it just something another kind of thing that's coming around that's being popular so i'm going to start mm -hmm. taking it um yeah. so definitely like being mindful that nutrition and wellness is very individualized, you know, like what works for someone or what someone else needs is not necessarily what, you know, your body needs. It can definitely bring more harm in it sometimes, especially with, especially, with those, especially with those heavy metals, because mm -hmm. your body stores those heavy metals like in your tissues. Um, mm -hmm. And it can really wreak havoc on your body. And, you know, sea mosses can be, especially depending on where you get it sourced from, um, mm -hmm. can be a really potent source of heavy metals. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to end on this last question, and I am so happy that this is the last one. Uh, yeah. So Sue Hill said, what do you think about rice water to help grow hair? It's, it's rich in protein, and uh, yep. it's, it's great. I mean, it's like one of those ancient um, remedies that just came around, and everyone's acting like, you know, it's brand new when people have been doing it for centuries without the internet, you know. So it's something that you should be mindful of if, you, if you're not really educated on protein and how you might get overload or how you need to check for protein balance on, in your hair. So mm -hmm. yes, it helps with strengthening the hair, causing the hair to have more elasticity and not to snap off and be brittle but then you have to know how to balance it so that it's not using excess and where it causes, you know, breakage. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think, Samari? Um, Have you I, used it? I don't use the rice water, no. <laughs> I, I don't use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too busy. I like, haven't used it in a while, but I think I, sh I, I want to revisit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll buy products that have it, though. Mm -hmm. I haven't really done much research. I've, I mean, I know I've heard a lot of people like using it, but I actually myself haven't done much research on like using it for for hair growth. Uh, do, do you think that it, um, Dab? Do you think that it provides like substantial growth? Growth, breakage. So it depends. If your hair is shedding, I don't see rice water doing anything much for you because it's mm -hmm. shedding from the roots from the follicle. Right. Well, if your hair is breaking off to where it's like brittle mm -hmm. on the ends and it needs some strengthening and some protection, a barrier of um, strength, then yes, I see mm -hmm. how it can help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I when I did when I did use it, I use I mean I used it for a while. Like I started using it for six months and then I did a video on it before I came out with it. I noticed more strengthening, thereby retention of hair, thereby growth. You know. So that's the way I said mm -hmm. more or less like a retention factor. Um, when I mm -hmm. did stop using it, I still, you know, my hair still did what it had to do. But for me, having to battle with episodes of, uh, uh, you know, iron deficiency and all that stuff, it was kind of one of those things that like helped me like, huh, okay, is this something like mm -hmm. a side? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. So, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, I think we have come to the end of the live. I wanted to keep it to an hour. I don't like talking after an hour, I feel like I'm gonna turn it yeah. to a pumpkin if I do. <laughs> Can I do some housekeeping with regards sure. to the website? Yeah. So, yeah. with the website, we're still building it out, and we have big plans for it that have not yet actualized because I've been pretty busy. But well, we, we're building out the website to where you 
we'll be able to get weekly um, newsletters about hair care topics that we we have been discussing and you'll be able to reach out to us to get answers to some questions and we also will have a page which Samara is going to be um, invited to join. It's going to be our directory for um, professionals that are in this field, not just um, hair loss, not just trichologists, but nutritionists like she is, and anybody that can contribute to helping your hair um, be healthier and grow longer and be and for you to you know overcome hair loss. So we're still building out this website, um, but if you can kindly join and sign up um, so that once we kick off things, hopefully in the new year, um, you'll be kept up to date with what's happening on the website. That would be much appreciated. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So um yeah, so on that note, I'm having a little bit of <laughs> my my I had a little bit of this was what I was talking about, Dav, my computer, my camera. Oh, so yeah, okay, yeah, but okay. it did good. It did it did good. amazing. Amazing it for an hour. Any, I'll take this any day, any time. I don't know what <laughs> happened, it just started acting up lately. But yeah, okay. so I'm going to let's just put it like this. I want to okay. say a big thank you to everyone that so um, much, guys. joined us you guys are amazing um please do go check out um the ladies page uh i also want to say go to Inst uh, instagram and please follow mm -hmm. let me okay is she still there yeah she's still there <laughs> well Follow Samaria. She's at Feeding the Roots on Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was going to try to drop it in the chat, but I don't think I can. Um, you can't leave a comment? Yeah, I don't think I can. I don't. Can you hear me? Oh, <laughs> yes, we can hear you. I was just telling the. Are the, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to let me just go to the Instagram page. Just okay. ignore, ignore what you're looking at right now. That's my evil sister. <laughs> Oh my gosh. oh my gosh, technology, technology. Okay, sucks. I think you put it in there. Um, Discovery Natural, full our guests, and yes, the yes. Mm -hmm. So, oh. right there. So, a couple of pages that you guys want to follow is, of course, uh, feeding. You see, you guys say I'm doing feeding the root mm -hmm. right there. Okay, so you want to follow our that's the lovely Samaria. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go follow our page and then of course go follow natural hair can grow trichology right over there. Okay. And then lastly, um Who and Hair Loss will be our community. Yeah, and we're on hair loss. Yes, yes, we're still really building that that one out and hopefully yeah. Yeah. get it to where we need it to be. Yeah. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone that joined us. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, guys. Thank you Samaria. Um, <laughs> it was last so minute. Much. Literally, I just told her, I think maybe some days ago, I was like, you need to join us. And she, no, she I obliged. <laughs> I appreciate you guys so, um, like asking me to come and um, everyone that, that hopped online. Um, I will say that, you know, if, I am like I am only licensed to practice in Tennessee, but if anyone has any questions that, that you know want some nutrition help, um, you can find me on my website at www.feedingtheroot.com, um, and I can help you even across state borders. Okay, so I really appreciate you guys. It's been fun. Thank you. Okay, thank you, you everyone. We appreciate you. Thank you, Samaria. Thank you, Dabs. And with that thank being said, so uh, we'll see you guys in another live chat. Please join us so that we can you can know when we come on live. Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.